Hey everybody, it's Matt Modai coming to you as always from Modai Sports Analytics. And of course, on behalf of Odds Jam, which I like to call the, shard the sharpest betting platform out there. Um, today, I'll be going over a couple topics. Uh, the first one will be bankroll management and how you use that in sports betting. The second one will be using uh, units in conjunction with your bankroll management. And those two are pretty easy. There's not a lot of math that goes into it. It's kind of just however you want to go about placing your bets and, and kind of funding your bets. And then the last one is going to be Kelly the Kelly Criterion method. And I'm just going to warn you, that one is a little bit math intensive. So that one's going to be the most complicated. But luckily, as you can see in my screen here, there are some tools to calculate that for you. So don't be scared by the math and how complicated it sounds. All you need to do is just find the odds information on the sports books and you're good to go. But before I get into it, I just want to make sure that I, I uh, let everybody know that they should subscribe to the Odds Jam YouTube channel. Uh, there's a ton of informational videos like this. Uh, I believe one of them told you how to how you can make 400k sports betting, and you don't even have to do and you don't even have to quit your full time job. So uh, make sure you subscribe, all that good stuff. But more importantly, you should definitely join the industry plan on the Odds Jam platform. I'm myself am a member. Um, I. I, I just think it's a great tool to make money betting in sports. The, the, the monthly cost you can make back in a week. So don't let that deter you. Uh, just use these videos, use the website, and you'll be able to make the money back you spend on the industry plan, like I said, within a week. Uh, for those of you who remember my last video, I went over uh, the importance of line shopping. And then I gave out four picks and showed why the Odds Jam website had them as profitable. And those picks went three and one. So make sure you follow along. And you'll get some winning picks along with the free money options you can get from Arbing, positive EV betting, stuff like that. But uh, like I said, the first thing I want to go over is bankroll management in sports betting. Um, so for me personally, I like to consider like I like to go over two different ways uh, you can use your bankroll and manage that. Uh, the first one is the easiest. It's probably the one that you should. It's the easiest one to use, and it's the one that's if you're not a novice. I believe that you should use it as a sports better. Um, all you do is you just you have a lump sum that you can dedicate towards your the funding your sports betting. So um, it's just it's just a one cost that you know obviously isn't going to break the bank. I, I like to say that this is your your fun fund, your slush fund, whatever you want to call it. Nothing that's mission critical. But let's say that you just set aside. You know, I can I can afford to give up five grand for sports betting. So what you want to do is you want to use that amount and you want to put it in as many different sports books as you can. Uh, the reason for this one is because of the video I talked about last time, the importance of line shopping, uh, the more, the more exposure you have, the better you're going to be able to, the more you're going to be able to get the better odds. And if you remember my first video went over all the new user promos, um, the more you put in is the more you get out. So I would advise if, if you can, if you can, like I said, I, I use the example of, of five grand, but whatever you can afford, I would advise spreading it out. And I believe all you need to do is invest. Um, I think it was like seven or eight grand and you can get 15 in free money plays based on only like seven, excuse me, seven sports books. So um, like I said, I, I, I would make sure that you spread it out, but that you have one lump sum that, you know, you can dedicate. So either, whether you do a thousand and five or you, however you want to split it up, doesn't matter. Um, but using the 5,000 example, so whenever you'd place a bet, you would do it on a unit scale. So um, most people in this, this example, it would be 1% of your total bankroll would equal one unit. So it would be 50 bucks for the $5,000 example. Um, and a unit is a way to kind of have a uniformed, a uniform way to tell people how much they should place on a wager. So if you know one person might have a 1,000, dollar bankroll one, one person has the five thousand dollar like i said so one unit means means the same but also different for different people so and the way that people use units is to kind of give a confidence level in a bet so one unit is just the, the lowest number so it's like hey i'm not i'm not 100 sure about this i'm not super confident so i'm just going to give it a one one unit so 10 bucks or 50 bucks whatever and then the the max of that would be five units which would be five percent of your bankroll so um again it just goes one percent one unit two percent two units and up there and most people will tell you and i would agree with that you should never bet above five percent of your bankroll because um as profitable as as using odds jam and stuff is it's still sports and crazy stuff still happens you know 
you could bet on the Ravens and then just watch one of the craziest Monday night football games happen and watch both teams win and lose the game multiple times. So sports are crazy. So no matter what, you should never do more than 5% of your bankroll. And the five units would be the most confident you're in. Um, so just to recap, bankroll management is just a, uh, the, the first way is I like to talk about is just the one lump sum that you can afford. So you're, you're, let's say you're, you're, buying a, you're buying a TV. It's just one lump sum. You're not touching your bank account ever again. And uh, you use that to fund your, your sports betting adventures. And that's why you should never use more than 5%. Uh, the next way uh, you can manage your bankroll, and this is actually what I did at first when I was first starting off like two years ago, uh, is you give yourself a weekly amount that you'll let yourself spend on betting on sports. So if you're just starting out, you're like, I'm not putting in 5K. That's ridiculous. Like I've never bet on sports before. I totally get it. So give yourself a weekly amount. Let's say you just say, you know what, I can I can afford to spend 100 bucks betting on sports a week. So no matter what happens, if you know, let's say you every Tuesday. So for me, I'll use that example. Every Tuesday, I invested uh, $100 into sports betting. So that following Tuesday, if I lost all that, um, I would just put in 100 again. But on the flip side, let's say I made 200 bucks. So I on I had $300 at the end of that week on Tuesday. I would I would withdraw 200 bucks. So I would continue to keep it at 100. Um, there's a bunch of different reasons why if you're not a novice, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Number one is it's kind of annoying just doing the weekly withdrawal and stuff. It just takes time. You have to just think about it more. Whereas if you just do the one lump sum, it's kind of just sitting in your account and you can manage it from there. Um, another reason is you don't have nearly as much exposure into all the different sports books, because obviously the difference between 100, 100 a week and 500 is a lot. So, or sorry, 5,000 is a lot. So if you only have a hundred, you can either, you know, put 10 bucks into 10 different sports books, or you can put a hundred into one and you're not line shopping. So you're not taking advantage of all that sports books have, have to offer. And it's just uh, a lot more transactional, but if you're just starting off and I completely understand, you don't want to put a ton of money into it. Um, that's a good way to start, but hopefully if you use Oddge Jam and you watch these videos, then you will just be able to make all that money and then you'll start doing the the better i think the better way to manage your bankroll um and as far as the unit scale for that one so if you're only doing a small number a week i would just probably make the unit like five or ten dollars um because if you make it 50 and you know you have 100 bucks a week you make two bets you lose and then you're done on the flip side if you make it five or ten dollars you can kind of make a lot of bets as the week goes on but it really depends the volume of vet bets you think you're going to be placing that week. So uh, for me personally, I like to kind of save all my money for NFL Sundays. So I might only bet one or two, make one or two bets during the course of the week. And then I'd save my whole bankroll for NFL Sundays. Or if you like to have, so um, I would like to, yeah, like I said, I would just save it all for NFL Sundays. Or if you like to make a lot of different small bets, you're going to only want to make your units $5. Um, but uh, so that's units and bankroll management in sports. Um, the next one is the Kelly Criterion method. And that is, like I said, it's detailed in this article here, which is very helpful. So I'd make sure to read that. Um, the bankroll management, another way to learn about that uh, before I get into the Kelly Criterion method is to use this blog. Um, I should have said this at the top of the show, but the blog is a great tool if you don't want to um, watch the, if you like, reading as opposed to watching YouTube videos, a lot of the same information is on the blog here. Uh, it's free, so if you're not sure if, if you're really gonna get value out of Ajdam, you can read these blogs to, to show you the value you're gonna get. Um, so that's the one thing I wanted to highlight on the website is the blog, because there's some great stuff in here and some really easy ways to make money. Um, but, so if the Kelly Criterion Method, uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's very complicated in terms of uh, the math behind it. Like if you read this article, uh, you see all these like B, P, Q, all these percentages and stuff. Um, I'll try to dumb it down for you as best I can. And I want to conf let's just confirm with you that you don't need to do all these formulas. You just need to have the odds and I can show you what that means. But so what is the Kelly criterion method? I'll take it off screen. So you don't read it. Um, basically, the Kelly criterion method is a mathematical way to calculate how much you should wager on a single bet. Uh, and you do this by calculating the difference between the actual odds and the true odds. So it's different than a unit. So it's not just saying like, oh, hey, you know, I think this one's going to be a, a five unit 
that I really am confident in it. You actually, you use the odds from the true odds like you would get from Pinnacle or Odds Jam versus odds you'd get on the DraftKings, and it would tell you exactly how much to bet. So the actual formula, if you if you want to know, if you're a math nerd like me and you find that interesting, so it's the uh, the numbers or the letters here. I can tell you what they mean. So B, that's going to be your odds. So as you see here, um, in this case, if it's a plus 100 bet, it would be one. If it's a minus 110 bet, it would be 0.9 and so forth. P, that is the odds of the winning. So if it's a 60-40 bet, like it says here, P would be 0.6. Uh, then Q is the odds of losing. So that would be, in this example, 40. And then you would divide that by B again. So as you can see here, it would be 1 multiplied by 0.6 minus 0.4, so 0.2, divided by 1. And that spits out a percentage like you show here. And technically, this tells you the percent of your bankroll you should stake, stake on a bet. So a lot of people, and it's detailed down here, um, like to use the half or third Kelly. And that essentially means whatever result you get from the Kelly criterion method, you half, third, or even fourth it. And the reason for that is because, like I said before, you should never be betting above 5% of your bankroll. And if it's like a crazy positive EV bet, the Kelly criterion method will tell you to bet like 20%, 40% of your bankroll. And that's just, that's definitely not something you should do. So the easy way to calculate it without having to do any math in your head is there are two ways. So let's quickly go to the positive EP, EV page and identify how much you should be placing on a bet using this. So um, let's see, the highest percentage is, looks like it's the Broncos over, uh, excuse me, under versus, um, sorry, the Broncos versus Jaguars under 42 and a half. So uh, Odds Jam, one, obviously the sharpest sports book out there has this at plus 127, whereas you can get it on FanDuel at plus 150. So the first thing you need to do is calculate what the odds are of winning and losing based on the bet. So let's say um, we don't need the bet amount. So let's say the example here again was um, plus 150, or sorry, plus 127. So that is the that is the plus 127. So it gives you a implied odds of 44% chance of cashing, right? So if you place that bet 100 times, 44% of the time, it'll win based on the odds of plus 127. So once you get that from this Action Network website, it's just betting odds calculator. It's really easy. You go to the kellycriteriancalculator.com and you place that. So let's use the first example of a 50K um, bankroll. So the sports book odds, as you remember, were plus 150. And again, I got that here. The probability of winning based on the Action Network calculator was 44%. So I type in 44%. I hit calculate, and it tells me that I should spend $330 of my bankroll on this. So I should use 60, 6.6% uh, um, of 500K. Obviously, that is a lot. Um, again, I like I said, you should never calculate above 6%. So um, if and this is where that gives you the option to use the half or third or even quarter Kelly method. So um, right now I have it at one. I, like I said, I don't want to advise that. So if I even drop this down to 0 0.5, 0 0.51, close enough. Now I'm only betting 3% of my balance. If I do 0 0.3, I'm only doing 2% of my balance. And again, point a quarter, I'm doing 1.67. So play around with it, which you think best. I definitely would go, wouldn't go any higher than 0.5 and I wouldn't go any lower than 0.25. So I kind of like one third as the happy medium. Um, and that's how that works. So for this bet, for the under 42 and a half, based on this, I should place $83. And, um, and I'll, it, as you can see here, equates with 10% return on the funds wagered. Let's do another example. This one's a little bit easier. So the Eagles, go birds, 49ers game. So you can get minus 120 odds on over 48. So you're going to type in here minus 120. Uh, let's do a different account. Let's do 1,000. Whoa. Let's do 1,000. 
instead of 5,000. And uh, the true odds, again, which you get from the sharpest sports book out there, Pinnacle or Odds Jam, let's use Pinnacle this time, minus 147. So you go to Action Network, you type in the odds, minus 147, and that gives you an applied winning percentage of about 60%, 59.51. So I'll go back to the Kelly Criterion Calculator, 59.51%. I'll hit Calculate. And it's saying that um, I should bet based on the 0.3 uh, conservative Kelly, third Kelly method, I should bet about 3% of my bankroll, which on $1,000 would be about $32. So um, that is how you make the money betting on sports, to be honest with you. That is the, the name of the game. And ARBing is an easy way to make money. You don't profit as much. Over, over time, if you use the positive EV bets in the Kelly Criterion sports betting method, you will profit, you will make your money back based on the industry uh, plan for our jam. I could tell you that much. It's I, I do it all the time. It's incredibly worth it. Um, if you just look through the history of these positive EV bets over time and you see how often they hit, um, it makes it worth it, especially because you know you're only placing profitable bets. So um, that is uh, the the gist of it. I understand the Kelly Criterion method can be very complicated, but if you use these tools, it makes it a lot easier. All you need to know are the odds. So all you need to do is identify times where the true line based on, again, Pinnacle, the sharpest sports book out there, or Dodge Jam, another sharp, sharp sports book. And then you use those odds there from the sharpest ones, and you compare them to the sports book odds. And there you find positive EV betting. You calculate everything in here, you place your bets, and you make money. So um like again i know it's complicated if you have any questions or want a further detailed explanation feel free to hit me up uh you can find me on twitter at modi underscore sports or you can email me modi sports analytics at gmail.com or you can obviously hit up the odds jam guys they're great as well so hope you enjoyed the video and just, like i said just want to make sure everybody subscribes signs up for the industry plan and we can all make money betting on sports together thanks